Hi, this is Brianna from the Champaign-Urbana Community Fab Lab, and in this video I'm going to talk about troubleshooting our Brother Enthusiast sewing machines. This tutorial is intended for staff rather than patrons, so if you're hanging out at the Fab Lab sewing and something goes wrong, you're not expected to start taking your machine apart. If you are staff, then here's what you can do if you're comfortable if something goes wrong. The first thing that you should always do if a machine isn't working properly is re-thread the machine. Check the bobbin carriage for old wads of thread and check the needle to make sure it's still straight. If the needle isn't breaking and re-threading the machine doesn't work, then you can move on to checking the machine's timing. Most of the time, timing isn't a problem with sewing machines. However, timing issues happen when the machines sew heavy material or run over pins. Anything that jolts the machine out of place or stresses the machine can cause the needle bar to move slightly and change the timing of the machine so that the top needle and the bobbin are no longer synchronized. So the first thing that I do whenever I work on a sewing machine is unplug it. And if I want to look at the timing, I need to take off this side panel that covers up the needle bar. You don't need to take this screw all the way off. Um, you just need to loosen it. There's a washer that needs to go on the outside of that cover. Once it's loose, the whole thing will just slide right off and you can turn it around to look at the needle bar on the other side. The needle bar is a part of the machine that goes up into the inside of the machine and connects to the gears to move the needle up and down. The needle attaches to the end of the needle bar. Whenever you're doing anything with the sewing machine, it's important to turn the wheel towards yourself and not away from yourself. Turning it away from yourself can mess up the timing of the sewing machine too, so you want to avoid it if it's at all possible. I'm turning the wheel manually towards myself to see if the needle is going up and down smoothly. If you look closely inside the machine, you can see that the needle bar has two hex sockets. The larger one adjusts the height of the needle bar. In some sewing machines, you would need a ruler to adjust the height of the needle bar, but the Brother Enthusiast has a mark underneath the bobbin carriage that shows you exactly where the needle height should be set. It's really hard to see in the video, so here's a picture. Do you see it? There it is. It's a little white dot, and when the needle crosses that point at its lowest position, its point should look like it's right in front of that dot. Too high and it will not go low enough for the bobbin thread and needle thread to connect. If it's too low, it'll scrape the metal part that holds the bobbin carriage. To loosen the needle bar, you'll need a Torx screwdriver. These are in our electronics area and they have a tip that looks like a six-pointed star. Once the screw is loose, the needle bar will move easily up and down. If it doesn't move easily, Check for lint and oil in the places where the moving parts make contact. Once the needle bar is loose, I spin the wheel towards myself and try to align the needle with the tiny dot in the lower part of the machine. Once it looks good, I tighten the needle bar and turn the wheel again to make sure that the machine is moving smoothly. If the machine locks or isn't moving smoothly, I loosen the needle bar and adjust it again. This machine is running smoothly, so I'm going to close it up. And while I close it up, I'm going to tell you about the second common problem with the sewing machines. If you are a patron or sewing along and you hear a terrible noise coming from the bobbin carriage, or the carriage itself pops up against its cover, it's probably a burr on the carriage causing it to pop out of place. A burr is a scratchy bit that's left on the carriage from the needle piercing it, and it usually happens when the carriage is put in incorrectly. Fortunately, it's really easy to fix. You get some fine grit sandpaper and sand out the burr. The hole left by the needle shouldn't be a problem. As I'm putting the bobbin carriage and thread back in, I like to check that the needle still moves up and down smoothly. If I just turn the machine on and try to run it, I might break a needle, but by moving it slowly I can check to make sure that everything is still smooth. Everything appears to be working with this one, so I'm going to turn it around and put the cover back on. And that's it. That's all you need to do to fix a couple of the most basic problems that can arise with our sewing machines. I hope you found this helpful. See you back at the Fab Lab.